Hey there, it's Hard Hat Holly coming to you live after the Norris Group's I Survived real estate event. Very informative. We had some really top-notch expert speakers from across the country and local speaking, like from Zillow, and we had some economists. I can't remember all their names. I remember John Burns. Doug anyway, Duncan. Yeah, Doug Duncan. So I've got a group of friends here. I'm gonna turn the camera around here in a second, but I just wanted to share my biggest takeaway was learning about the huge impact of student debt on our economy. They were saying that our housing prices would actually be 8% higher had we not had such a big group of kids, millennials now, that has this huge burden of student debt that's this not allowing them to participate in the housing market and not allowing them to buy a house. So I'm gonna go around the car and my friends are gonna introduce themselves and talk about what their big takeaways are too. So, Aliyah, take it away. Hi, I'm Aliyah, Investors in Action. This is my business partner, Terry. And my takeaway had to do more with the sharing economy and the millennials. What we have in place is things like Airbnb, SoFi, all these creative websites and technologies that allow us to participate in real estate in different ways. So how that's shaping out the future is yet to be fully seen, but it was just very interesting to hear the technology side of the conversation and, and how those sharing economies you know, uh, maybe baby boomers having multi-generations living in the house. Once their kids move out, they might be renting out rooms. How that affects the whole economy with where people are choosing to live. And uh, and then just seeing the next wave of people buying homes. It is the millennials, but they're, they're a lot more conservative than maybe our generation. Cool. Terry, do you want to yeah, say something? I'm Terry, Aliyah's partner with Investors in Action as well. Um, one of the biggest takeaways I had was the idea that home ownership is no longer as desired as it used to be in years past. So people are much more comfortable living uh, in apartments or with the idea of being a renter, whether it's in apartments or renting a home. It's not quite as taboo as it was to have gone through a foreclosure and to not be a homeowner anymore. So the idea of com coming through that economy and the economic downturn and landing wherever you landed is not such a big deal and you don't have that stigma that that makes it a bad thing. So I thought that was a very interesting change from how I know it used to be and certainly how I grew up where it was always, you know, you, you go to school, you go to college, you come out, you get a job and you buy a home right away. So that's really no longer the case, not only because of the student debt factor, but because things have shifted and changed. I might actually add to that. The, um, the whole thing with accountability was a topic of conversation where it's actually quote unquote smart to default on your mortgage if yeah. you can't pay it versus struggling to make the payments. So I thought that was an interesting shift in the 2008-2009 cycle where people were losing their homes. People are now saying, well, if you're if you need a default, default, you might not lose your home. You might be able to sit in it for the next four years and not make a payment. So that level of accountability is no longer there as part of our culture. Yeah. Okay, Miss Karen, the sponsor of our fun night. <laughs> Yay! Something to add to that, I mean, you know, to change the gears a little bit, is every time we come to I Survived Real Estate, I hear Bruce Norris talk about uh, bringing about the assumable loan, you know, where the non-qualifying assumption, wouldn't that make so much sense? And I would just love for somebody to bite on that idea one time. I mean, it worked out so well for so long. Being able to take an FHA loan um, and, uh, you know, be able to qualify as opposed to having to come down, come up with this huge down payment, maybe some of those millennials will get into houses if they could assume a mortgage. So I'd like to see that come back. And I and I hope Bruce will continue to bring it up every time. And what's your name and your business? Oh, hi, yeah, I have a name. <laughs> I'm Karen and the company is You Direct IRA Services. Yeah, episode eight on the Hard Hat Holly podcast. Oh, episode so, eight, yeah. Yeah. Oh, go check it out. Like, she can help you invest your retirement. Okay, okay, here we go, Enjoy all right. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like button and the subscribe button to be notified of future videos by me. Go to the website hardhatholly.com to get your free download on how to find houses to flip for profits.